too. You know, you've, you've got this reputation as someone who's, uh, since you're sitting next to me, mildly irreverent. It's, I mean, witness your, the word you use to describe winning the Ashes, for example. Yeah. And yet, every time I've spoken to you, I've thought if there was one romantic in the game, it would be Ian Chappell. Good old-fashioned romantic, even if you may not like being called that. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what a cricket you, you, romantic is. Really. Well, you, you, you remember with joy all the little things in the game. You, you still enjoy the little traditions of the game. You, you don't strike to come across as someone who enjoys the traditions, but you actually do. Oh, no, I, what, I, what I have a problem with, is I, I don't suffer fools very well. <laughs> don't you know that? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I guess... I'm, you know, authority, I'm not really good at uh, accepting um, instructions without question. That's why I was absolutely useless in the cadets. Um, <laughs> but as a leader, when you became a leader, were you therefore open to the idea of people not accepting what you said without questioning? Oh, absolutely. That, I mean, I learned a lot about captaincy um, by being told uh, that I was a, an idiot, uh, in worse terms than that, actually. But uh, You're holding back? Well, I can't use the words okay. that you know guys like Rodney Marsh used, um, but yeah, I mean that's I learned a bit about captaincy. In fact, I learned a very good lesson uh, by Rodney calling me exactly that uh, in the middle of a Test match at Old Trafford in '72. Uh, I had uh, Johnny Gleeson, the folded finger spinner, bowling at one end. I had uh, John Inverity bowling left arm orthodox spin at the other end, and it was a green top. You know, it was seeming everywhere. And as I wasn't at first slip, I was at fielding at mid-wicket. And as I crossed over, Rodney was crossing from end to end. And as I went past, he just said, you're an mm -mm idiot. And I said, what, Rodney, something I said to you in the bar last night? And he said, no. He said, this is the greatest seamless paradise of all time. And you've got a spinner bowling at each end. And I said, well, I will remind you, uh, Rodney, that one of the spinners I've got bowling has just got Jeff Boycott out, which was a pretty important wicket. In fact, I was vice captain of Australia before I was vice captain of South Australia. But I'd only captain about five games and a lot of those were at the Adelaide Oval. And, and at the Adelaide Oval, I'd go from two quickies, the two new ball bowlers, two straight to Mallard and Jenner, the two spinners, you see. And I was doing basically the same at Old Trafford. And, and what it made me realise was that, you know, I was, I was in danger of becoming an Adelaide Oval captain. Uh, and I had to realise that I wasn't at the Adelaide Oval every game and I have to, had to captain according to the, um, uh, to the conditions. And so it was a very good lesson. But I mean, I don't, I don't understand anybody, any leader, whether he be a cricket captain or any world leader, why he would want to have around him a whole lot of people who agree with him. Because how are you going to learn? I mean, yeah, I, as a, I say, I learned a lot. of an insecure man. Well, I think it is. And, and, and I mean, Kim Hughes made the comment that you can't be one of the boys and be a good captain, which is the greatest load of codswallop I've ever heard in my life. Because uh, you know, under the Australian system, you, you know, they pick the 11 and then they pick the captain out of that 11. So before I was captain, I'd been a member of that team for quite a number of years. So I'm drinking with Marsh and Walters and Tabor and Mallard and, and all the guys as a player. And then suddenly I come along as captain and what? I just say, now boys, I'm not yeah, drinking with you. But there's also the danger of that uh, forming a bit of a club and saying, oh, he's, he's my friend, how do I leave him out? And, and, no, and no, but, that, you that see, but you see, that, look, there was a journalist who came to me. We dropped Doug Walters from the Oval Test match in 1972. Uh, first time ever that an Australian side went into the field without a New South Welshman in the team. And one of the journalists, Dick Tucker, came to me after the team was announced and he said, Ian, I'm surprised. That's all he said. And I said, Dick, if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, you don't know me very well. I said, if you think I'm going to pick Doug Walters because he's a mate of mine when it's not in the best interest of the team, then Dick, you don't know me very well. I'm, I'm going to pick a team to win that game. I'm not going to pick a team that's full of my mates and, and keep out guys that I'm not so fond of. Ridiculous. I mean, I've always said about captaincy, um, you know, like and dislike does not come into it. You, you only got to ask yourself one question. Can he get me a hundred? I guess it's two questions really. Can he get me a hundred? Can he get me five wickets? If the answer to those questions is yes, the guy's in the team. Now, whether you like him, dislike him, whether he's a disruptive force or not in the team, that's your job as a leader because it's, there's two parts to it. There's captaincy and there's leadership. Captaincy's on the field, you know, placing the batting order, changing the bowling, moving the fielders around. Leadership is off the field. 
And then if, so if I've got someone in the team who can get me five wickets, but he's a bit of a disruptive force, then it's my job to, to make him fit. I, and I've got to tell the guy, mate, I want you in this team. Now, you know, we've got a few things that we've got to sort out here. Let me throw you a tricky one. If he says, if he says buzz off, Skipper, I'm giving you five wickets on, on the field. How does it matter to you what I'm doing off the field? Because I'm sure those characters exist. Okay. In, in a cricket team? Well, I mean, I'll try and work with the guy and if it gets to the point where it's unworkable, well, then he's, he goes. Or either that or I've been sacked because I can't make it work. But, but I'm going to do my darndest to make it work. And, you know, I think... You see, what, what players want from you? The, the most important thing uh, as a captain is respect. You know, if you, you've got a... Under the Australian system, You've already earned respect as a player uh, because you've been there for a few years. Hopefully you've earned respect as a human being. Now you become captain. Now you've got to earn their respect as a captain and you've got to maintain the respect in those other two areas. And the other thing that they want from you is honesty. And, and I think if, if, I'm, if the guy comes up to me and he says, buzz off, you know, and I say, well, mate, you know, we've got, we've got to make this work. If you... The, the, if he said that to me, I'd say, well, do you really want to play for Australia or not? And if he says yes, I say, well, right, now we've got to work this thing out and, and make sure that it works. And I'm not going to tell you how to run your life, but we've got to make this thing work because whilst it is a game for individuals, it's also got to mesh as a team. So, and I think you can, as long as you give them honesty, I think you'll, you'll get on with most cricketers. David, can you look at a cricketer and say, I think this guy will be a good captain. Uh, more important than being a good captain, a good leader of men. Because you separated captaincy from leadership. Can you look at someone and say, I think leadership will weigh him down? Can you look at someone and say, I think leadership will buoy him up? Well, maybe it's an exceptional example. But I remember seeing Shane Warne the first time as a captain in the Super 8s tournament. Uh, it was being played up in the, north, in the winter in Australia, up north, uh, Townsville, I think. And Victoria were playing somebody... And last over, you bear in mind, you've only got six fielders in this game. Last over, the opposition, might have been Western Australia, I think. The opposition needed something like six runs to win, two wickets in hand. And Warren just said, obviously, with his captaincy, well, we can't win this game by containing. We've got to get these two guys out. Damien Fleming bowled the last over and he had, he had a couple of slips, I think, and a bloke in short, and they got the two wickets. And I was so impressed that I went home that night and I rang Richie Benner, who was in the UK doing his commentary there. And I rang him up and I said, Rich, I've just seen a really exciting young captain. He just happens to be a leg spinner. We might have our next uh, leg gambling captain. leg spinning captain from Australia. Um, so in Did the case of... Sorry? Did he agree with you? Well, he, he hadn't seen Warren at that stage. Um, I, I think he was excited about the thought of uh, a leg spinner captaining <laughs> Australia. But... Uh, so in the case of Warren, yes, you could see that, uh, but I mean his talents were so obvious. Well, well, I, well, I, I think the other way, I, I could, I can pretty well tell you, I can look at someone out there and say, this guy should not be captain. They, you know, he's he's weighed down by the captaincy, and if a guy is weighed down by a captaincy, you should never appoint him because you're doing him a disservice and you're doing the team a disservice.